Hello everyone and welcome to a webinar hosted by the Cloud Standards Customer Council, Cloud Customer Architecture for Enterprise Social Collaboration. My name is Tracy Berardi. I'm Program Manager of the CSCC. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, so this reference architecture was written by members of the, the Cloud Council. As I advance to the next slide, I'll just give you a little bit of background um, for reference. The CSCC is an end user advocacy group dedicated to accelerating cloud successful adoption. And we work with standards bodies, open source groups, and end user organizations to publish vendor neutral guides like this on important cloud computing topics. And our work is distributed across uh, industry members to influence standards of practice and highlight customer requirements, use cases, best practices. So on this slide, uh, just posted a snapshot of some of the papers we've published since our inception in 2011. You can see some of the projects we have lined up for, for 2017. We worked on this social collaboration architecture at the end of, of 2016 and just made it publicly available in January. Um, so thanks again for, for tuning in. We invite you to, to visit our website to read this material and the other papers. The, the site is cloud-council.org. And consider joining as a member. Uh, there is no membership fee. We're an open membership organization. And you'll be the first informed as, as new papers are published. And you're welcome to contribute to papers, whether as a writer or a reviewer um, of topics that are of interest to you. Um, and you can also network with others uh, in this space. In the Attachments tab on BrightTalk, we've uploaded a PDF version of today's presentation that you can download and take with you. We also have a, a direct link to the architecture in its entirety. We should have some time for Q&A at the end of the presentation, so you're welcome to submit questions in the, in the questions box. Um, I'm joined by my colleagues Heather Krieger and Mike Kudla from the CSCC who will deliver the presentation. So let's go ahead and, and get started. I'll, I'll transition over to you, Heather. Thanks. Thank you, Tracy. So welcome to the latest in the series of Cloud Customer Reference Architectures being published at the CSCC. Um, this one is about enterprise social collaboration um, and how to use that in your cloud architectures. And so um, Mike will take us through that architecture in great detail, and we're very proud to have been able to be involved in helping develop this architecture, this very innovative architecture. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what the cloud solution architectures are, but just um, right quick, we want to just talk about what the series is. And so in this series, we have already published e-commerce um, back in at uh, the end of 2016, IoT, the reference architecture for big data analytics, mobile, and web application hosting. And the links are there to all of the other series in this, um, or the, all the other reference architectures in this series. So if we want to go to slide four, Tracy, thank you. So what are Cloud Customer Reference Architectures? If this is the first one that you've had an opportunity to join, Basically, these are straightforward human readable descriptions of elements needed to implement a particular application solution in using the cloud infrastructure, using cloud platforms, using cloud software, and cloud services. These reference architectures are deployment neutral. These components and capabilities that we're defining and sharing today are deployable in public, private, or hybrid. Uh, cloud environments, and they're implementable. We can implement these capabilities using infrastructure, platform, or software as a service. These are general purpose, reusable architectures that you can extend for your own enterprises, gives you a kickstart, um, as well as industry-specific architectures that are also vendor neutral and open. They're important because it gives us a kickstart and a common brace of understanding for a particular domain so that we can communicate more clearly uh, between vendors, between customers and vendors, and even just within our own companies. I know the enterprise social architectures have uh, been a very important one for IBM to come to agreement and understanding around. So these are also very uh, excellent starting points and anchors for you and your companies. 
Um, and they're useful when you're starting out with cloud in particular domains and really exploring new innovative architectures for your enterprises. So Tracy, why don't we go to slide five. So I talked in our first slide. Um, these are all of the candidate architectures showing the latest one here, social collaboration. I talked a little bit in the first slide about um, the, the ones that we've already published. IoT, analytics, mobile, web application hosting, um, and also e-commerce as the first of the industry architectures. So we have under development security. Um, actually, we've already published hybrid integration as well. Um, we look forward to working on additional industry architectures. And if you have interesting architectures that you think is a good starting point or a good topic, that you could really use um, for your company or for the industry, please contact us or contact Tracy. Um, and let's work together to try to develop the latest in the series. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike to take you to slide six. All right, thanks, Heather. Um, I'd also like to thank everyone that's attending today and those that are listening on a replay. Additionally, um, thank those co-authors on the paper that uh, have given me the opportunity to present to you today. I think we had about 11 folks that contributed uh, to this content as well as others that provided feedback. So, so we thank you and hope that uh, you find uh, this work valuable as you look at how you can apply uh, social in your organizations. So with the, the rapid growth and rate of innovations, you know, organizations and people that may be challenged to innovate, but you know, also those challenges, um, you know, to find the right people, the right information, and then filter out the noise. We all have a lot of information, and it's really getting to the right information and getting the right information and the right people together. Um, I kind of look at it maybe in the era of DevOps and continuous delivery, we have so much really social and collaboration content. We're almost in a, you know, continuous collaboration mode where we have to deal with, you know, our own internal collaboration, but now more so even uh, working with customers and partners, and how do we find the right mix of, of capabilities to address that. So with this paper, we, we tried to take a look at how to use enterprise social capabilities to, to leverage peoples and teams in, in new ways to innovate and, and develop you know, business-focused solutions. So beyond just traditional places to put files and email and, and um, instant message with, with the, each other, but how do we really extend and expand that to, to focus on, on business scenarios? So not looking at these t as you know, distinct tools, but really how do we take these capabilities um, that can be you know, selective subsets of capabilities and combine them and extend them with a broader ecosystem you know, focused on delivering business outcomes. So there's um, some other CSCC papers that, that relate to this. This, in a sense, is, is kind of a, a companion paper to one that had been published a few years ago on uh, the business value and measuring um, business results with social. So you may want to check that paper out as well as uh, keep an eye out for an update on that one uh, sometime in the first half of this year. Um, so in this session, I'm going to take you through the, the reference architecture. Um, some of the pieces will be, you know, fairly common, and, and you recognize those. So we'll we'll touch on those lightly, and then uh, focus on other areas uh, in a bit more detail. So this is a, a high-level view, looking at, you know, we'll go through through all the components here, but looking at the the end user network, uh, looking at the idea of a, what a service consumer is related to social, uh, the provider network that provides the core social capabilities. Um, peer services that will augment those capabilities and then as well as tying into existing applications or sources of data that may exist in, uh, in your on-premises uh, organization today. Uh, so this details view is really a, just a, a quick reference. You'll, you'll see this later on as we walk through a customer scenario. Uh, this is a, kind of the details view to that, but just to give you an introduction to there's you know details behind each of these uh, each of these pieces and, and as Heather mentioned they're intended to be a, a starting point for for your architecture so some of these pieces 
uh, may be applicable for some scenarios, for some they may not be, and that's you know, really what we're, we're showing here, that you can take the right pieces um, to build the, the right solution for, for your business requirements. So getting started with the, the architecture, uh, in the upper left-hand corner, we have really the user network, which becomes the client and the devices and applications that users use to interact with the system. Um, so the you know mobile client, we're or the, the the rich client here, an email client or a plug-in application that may fit into your word processing products or something that gives you access to um, the social capabilities or an in-context set of uh, subset of social capabilities. So that's really what the the client focus is. Uh, mobile is the next piece, looking at uh, mobile applications, so specific application design for Android or iOS or some other um, operating system that you would get from, you know, the, the uh, you know, a store for the, you know, the Apple or, or Google store to, uh, to get a hold of those applications. Uh, additionally, you know, something to note here too is we, we kind of made an, a general assumption about uh, applications in an organization, you might have different methods to push down applications to devices. There could be things like mobile device management that would be in the middle between your device and the networks. Um, since those aren't required, we didn't go into detail for those here, but you could certainly you know, augment this with, with those types of capabilities if they're uh, required in your organization. So again, just wanted to, to mention that. To, um, there are other pieces that we recognize in uh, in enterprises that may need to fit into this picture for uh, your given requirements, but this should serve as a, a base foundation for uh, the social capabilities. Uh, so moving on to the web application. Again, this is Assuming you're using a web browser that um, may be responsive design or, or tailored to um, accessing the social services, so nothing nothing new there, desktop browser, tablet browser, phone and device support, so it should be, um, you know, the services should be responsive in a way that um, appropriately uh, adjusts the experience for the device type and, and size that you have available. Uh, so moving on from there into the service consumer area, uh, what we looked at was you have an end user client that may access the services directly, and then you may want to get into this idea of uh, integration from, from two perspectives. One would be integrating outward, which is taking some of the social capabilities, social services, and integrating those into another application. So someone in context will have access to those capabilities and not have to leave what they're doing in order to get some, you know, get to the um, services that they need. So that's the idea of integrating outward. Um, integrating in, we'll talk about later with, uh, with peer services a little bit later on. Um, so in this case, again, the service consumer is, is kind of a, a pattern where you're taking some of the capabilities and injecting them or ingesting them in another service so that, um, that you could display it with some other content or other applications. So one example of that would be an integrated digital experience or you know, a portal or a website where you're mixing um, you know, content on that site or content and applications and you want to bring in um, maybe some expertise or some blogs or some of the social services that you want to uh, use to enhance uh, what's being provided by the, the digital experience. Uh, the next item would be the peer cloud, and we looked at this as really, um, it could be another software as a service platform, it could be something that you're uh, using a, a platform as a service that's hosting another application. Um, so, it could, you know, so it could be something like an ERP system or an HR system that you've got deployed or getting uh, provided as SaaS from another vendor and want to be able to to integrate that. So that was the idea behind uh, Peer Cloud, that there may be different types of service consumers that would need to integrate um, with the social services. Uh, moving on uh, from there, we have the you know, 
edge services, which would provide your um, DNS and uh, firewall and load balancers, again, based on your network configuration. There may be things within additional ones within the organization, but in general, these would be uh, in a SaaS environment, things typically provided to by the, there may be things provided by the uh, service provider uh, that also adds to that or addresses security within uh, the enterprise uh, services itself. Uh, so the next piece is we have a, a box around here in the center. Um, in, in the the upper center, there is the provider network. So again, the the focus of this is looking at you know kind of in the paper a, a SaaS view, but this could be applied. Uh, in an on-premises environment as well. So this is not um, restricted to SaaS, but that was a, a focus of the paper looking at, um, at uh, a SaaS solution. So within that provider network, you'll see a, a, an inner box for the enterprise social services, and these comprise what we would call the core pieces of um, social collaboration and things that are typically then provided by the, the SaaS provider. Um, so the first piece uh, in the in the center there is uh, uh, networking. So this would be things like profiles and status updates, presence indication, being able to tag content, tag people with um, with information that helps you find them or helps you um, surface their information or their content in in search, as well as allowing you to do notifications of content changes or just personal status messages and updates um, being provided through the, the social network. Uh, the next piece is uh, messaging, which would be your traditional email services. Um, so being able to send and receive uh, email messages, calendaring and scheduling, um, the, the, the basic messaging um, services provided uh, as a cloud service. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later or, you know, that there may be also scenarios that you want to support uh, hybrid mail. So those are also situations that we've accounted for in, in the architecture than uh, hybrid mail, meaning you have um, some on-premises mail as well as um, some mail in the cloud and a SaaS provider. It could even be multiple SaaS providers in the case where you have organizations with uh, subsidiaries that may be using different uh, email systems or merger and acquisition scenarios where you're running uh, different systems during a migration or for a parallel effort. So those could also be uh, accounted for um, in the architecture as well. The next area is live collaboration. So looking at live collaboration, meaning web conferencing, uh, instant messaging, as well as um, persistent group chat. Uh, so that would be things where you have uh, you know, a number of people are invited to a particular chat and that chat continues to, uh, to persist even if they're not in it. So you can go back in and, and see what happened uh, while you were gone and there may be additional capabilities around that and, and integration points to um, other applications as well. So um, moving on to the next uh, area in enterprise social services, we'll look at communities. So communities are a way to really take a sub, kind of find a, a subgroup that wants to collaborate around a given topic or topic. So some of the other services that exist within social um, could also be surface there, but uh, community is really looking at how do I um, get an aggregation space or a way to get people to come together for a given area of interest or um, problems. You're, you're able to work together and still have uh, the information available to the broader community, but you're, you're focused um, a little more narrowly so you're not uh, bothering everybody with, with your project unless they want to see it or get involved. Um, so within communities, you might have that idea of um, idea management or ideation where you're sparking up, you know, potential inch, uh, projects and people can vote and, and work on, you know, what are those um, key initiatives, um, being able to, to take those from maybe an idea onto working through them as well. So the idea of goal management, let's identify 
um, tasks and things we want to work on, you know, doing polls and surveys, being able to share rich media videos, other other links in there, as well as you know some of the traditional blogs and wikis and other things that you've uh, come to expect from uh, social. And the next component would be uh, file sync. So this again would be you know, file sync and share so that you can uh, store files, uh, maybe store them in folders, share individual files, share folders, uh, do things like document uh, live co-editing so that you know a number of folks can work directly on the same document rather than having to take the document offline and work on it and upload it to so those um, traditional capabilities and extended with with live uh, co-editing of uh, documents. Uh, so these services again are intended to be you know the arrows there in between them show that while they can be individual components they can also uh, work together um, and again the, the dotted lines kind of representing that in certain scenarios you may not have all of those that come into play for a given use case um, and then additionally that you know looking beyond the SAS provider you may also have cases where some of these capabilities are all provided by a single source provider or in other cases you may look at um, maybe uh, some of the services are provided by an external source as well. Uh, so we've tried to really articulate the, the core pieces of it and then understand from a deployment and uh, delivery perspective that there may be differences there based on your individual needs as well as uh, the given use case. So again, the intent was not necessarily to focus on all of the services, but more of the, how these services can then be applied to to business um, problems. And we did um, restrict the scope a bit to kind of an enterprise um, social network as opposed to tying in an external public network, you know, like Facebook or LinkedIn or something like that that you um, ultimately may have a need to integrate with. We just had narrowed the scope to exclude some of the public social networks like that. So uh, you'll see that in the focus of the paper is really on kind of internal collaboration for an organization with with itself, with partners and, and customers, but in, in more of a controlled context rather than a, a large public network. Uh, next topic could be just a user directory. So there'd be situations just again where you're storing user information, particularly if you have a, um, you know, we looked at a couple of scenarios where you may have just a company that's cloud only and, and this is their only presence. So you may have a, a user directory there. You also may have an organization that, that has, you know, its own existing uh, enterprise directory and, and federated identity management. So, you know, there may just be uh, from a security perspective, you may have, you know, be using SAML and, and controlling, um, you know, authorization that way and access, uh, and then using, you know, your corporate directory to, to, to maintain that. But we wanted to account for uh, that scenario or a hybrid scenario where you may have uh, some folks on the cloud and some folks that uh, were working in an on-premises environment. Uh, the next area would be peer services. And as I mentioned earlier with the service consumer, the idea of integrating outward peer services is the opposite of integrating inward. So we look at uh, peer services as um, something that is provided by a third party or an external service that goes to support capabilities available in the enterprise social service. Um, so whereas a service consumer is going to just be um, integrating or, or accessing the services maybe indirectly or you know through through some other mechanism, peer services, the idea behind that is you're going to provide additional capabilities or functionality that's not inherently provided as a core service. Um, so that could be, you know, depending on the service provider you're looking at in a SaaS scenario. Um, you know, there may be differences that some providers provide certain capabilities uh, directly as part of their service, while others may not. 
Others may choose to integrate a third party to provide certain capabilities. So that's the idea uh, behind peer services that we're going to have um, something that provides a core function in enterprise social services, but that that's just going to be uh, originated from an external or third party service. So moving uh, on to our uh, next area, which was the transformation and connectivity. So this is looking at the idea that we, we know that there are um, enterprise applications, enterprise data, that, that the example I gave with hybrid mail, where you have applications or data that may need to interact with the system uh, that exists in an on-premises environment, or it could even exist in maybe it's another private cloud or some environment that's external to your enterprise social services, so you will need a mechanism to uh, securely access that data, which is represented there that can um, you know, be things like secure connectivity, VPNs, firewall access, and then uh, in the case if you have data that needs to be pulled in, this idea of um, you know, whatever ETL, uh, extract, transform, load mechanisms you may have for exchanging data between that uh, source system and the enterprise uh, social services. And similarly, similarly to the uh, user directory that we had in the enterprise social services, it's the same thing there on premises, um, particularly focused in a hybrid mail scenario that you may have an enterprise directory um, where you're storing information about users and groups. Uh, you may have uh, enterprise data or it could be enterprise applications um, that are either providing data or that you do want to surface social capabilities. Um, into those applications. Um, and then, uh, so I guess that didn't advance there. So it's the third piece there, just applications. So, you know, customer hosted applications uh, uh, that, that they may want to integrate either out into the, the social services if there's data or information there or be able to consume. Um, a subset of services from, from the enterprise social environment. And then next, looking at security, as I mentioned, um, security would be, we, we, we took a broad view of security in this from, um, you know, if you look at it from an enterprise, looking at a SaaS solution, you're going to need, obviously, security of your data. So what are the policies around uh, data security? Uh, how are they handled? In the case of a SaaS provider, you have things like the how is the service provider itself securing, you know, your data, the environment, the integrity of of the servers of, uh, of their environment. How are they preventing um, improper access to the data? Um, so that type of information we we talked about a bit in the paper. There are other CSCC papers that do go into. Um, some of the topics around hosting and what to look for in cloud application hosting and, and security. So there are some areas that we didn't delve into deep in this paper because that information exists in other papers. So we did our best to uh, point you to those with uh, references or links um, in there. And that relates also to information uh, governance as well. Um, that, that a certain providers may have um, different policies or capabilities um, around your data, being able to track and audit usage and access to data from not only people within your organization, but from uh, the service provider itself. Um, so we just tried to call that out as overarching um, things that would need to be evaluated uh, given your particular use case and whether you're in that you know, regulated industry and, and how you're going to intend to use the services that you may need to evaluate um, some of those more closely. Um, so things like archiving and data retention may not be that important to one, but in certain regulated industries it may be extremely important. So we wanted to identify those but not um, get too far into dictating what has to be there because what's important in one area may not be as critical for another. So we 
um, identifying those, but not necessarily making specific recommendations. There is some some general guidance provided in the paper around um, areas to look at or things to be aware of um, as you're evaluating uh, providers. So from there, moving on to kind of a customer example or uh, walkthrough scenario. This, when we looked at you know the the uses of enterprise social again, what's kind of represented in the diagram on the left is for a given scenario, you might not use every uh, thing that's represented in the reference architecture. So it's intended to be. Um, a good starting point, some uh, understand the, the capabilities and uh, integration points, and then be able to apply it to a given use case. So even you know an organization may leverage all of the services depicted there, but in a given scenario or given use case, they may not. And that's what we tried to just represent here as, as one example of uh, that I'll take you through in the walkthrough was an example of um, customer innovation, so um, they're going to, through a, a public social network, network, discover some information about a about a product, and then from there identify that they need to um, get a team together around um, a suggestion that was made by a customer and um, react and respond to that. So I'll, I'll take you through that. But other examples to to think about here with. Um, you know, with the scenarios is looking at, you know, using social to capture information and idea, um, facilitate communication, deliver communication and social activities in new ways, um, things like employee onboarding, how could you create a, a good welcome message for new employees and, and get them to feel like part of the team, leveraging um, social to do that is a, is a great use case. It, yeah, allows you to really tailor it and, and make it um, something that people can participate in, not only new hires, but uh, people that have been there for a long time. Um, safety, so things like plant safety, other things where you're able to have um, ongoing conversations, uh, updating information, being able to integrate you know, live chat, video, things there that really can help with um, you know focusing a team around um, safety, patient care is another one, um, looking at really reinventing um, how sales uh, teams work with customers. Think of um, you know some stores that have a lot of high turnover and they have with their sales associates being able to tie in social to you know, create the new uh, operations manual is, is a, another example of that. So rather than you know they had have, have, have used the social services to be able to, you know, communicate real time with other employees, be able to look up information and training materials. So um, that's the idea behind behind this is really to look at how do we take these social capabilities and, and start to extend them out into in solving you know tangible uh, business problems, and, and then being able to you know give you that idea of, of integration and expanding beyond just the social capabilities itself and and that they shouldn't be a separate destination they can be but also they can be you know extended out so they're addressed in context so as an example here in our in our walkthrough scenario i'm not going to read it word for word but uh, you'll be able to see that in the charts it's um you know customer was on uh, the organization's website that was um, had the integrated digital experience information um, from the social network uh, pulled into its its web experience so the customer was able to go out to the website, see that there was a customer community that they were able to join, participate in with, with other customers, um, share their experiences with not only other customers, but also with, in this case, the, the fictitious uh, Acme company in this example. Um, with Acme's product management team that was also reviewing it. So through that interaction on their their website, you know, the customer gets to a community that's provided by the social services integrated into the Acme company's website. 
Um, they're also able to provide a mobile experience so the customer can interact with uh, with that site and with the Acme product teams and through that community, um, you know, through the website, through the mobile channels. And through integration you know, on the, the website, um, you know, users invoking the social services and directly surface through through the website. Um, back at Acme Corporation, the product manager is able to uh, is, is using their own ERP system and notices an alert about the customer's feedback um, as they're checking a product in, in the ERP system. They're seeing that the customer externally had commented on the same product. Um, so the Acme product manager is able to launch into the customer community, review uh, that information in more detail, and they're both accessing that same source of, of data and information. And in this case, they notice that the customer commented that they liked the product, but the size, the single serving size available reduces it to use, and they'd like to see some other variations in, in the product offering. Um, so moving on, the product manager is able to see um, to see that and uses a social platform to create a document cataloging the customer's insights and other customers that had since commented on that and then being able to share it within the team, within uh, the product management team. And again, they're able to access that single uh, source of information. Um, after consensus that, that that was a really good idea that they wanted to expand it further, the Acme PM was able to use the social tools to search beyond just um, some experts in their organization, but look at sales and marketing and, and some of the distribution areas and you know, using uh, the, the social networking, be able to identify and assemble a team that can appropriately look at this uh, request to see how they could best address it. So they form that team. They can invite outside partners and suppliers to be involved as well. If they look at, you know, what are the product and marketing changes, you've got um, suppliers man that, that help with manufacturing and distribution and maybe external um, marketing as well. So you're able to collaborate outside of, of your organization, uh, bringing those people in uh, safely and securely and being able to, to track who has access and, and what they're working on. And then being able to hold, um, you know, moving on to, to step eight there, several uh, web conferences to review plans, discuss product details so you can, you know, do a file sync and share and, and, and other activities in the community, uh, work collaboratively, but also have those you know, live meetings and things um, as well as part of the solution. And then, you know, once the, the new product is created, being able to to go back out to the customer channel, being able to um, drive awareness of the new updates and the, and the products, again, being able to integrate those out back through uh, the social channels externally. Um, so that takes us through um, really the, the basic architecture and um, a given scenario and you know just to kind of wrap up the conversation around that again is, is thinking about how this could be applied to to business scenarios um, that we could have um, these services provided again by a single source that we represented here by the enterprise social service or looking at the broader ecosystem about again integrating this content outward and then integrating inward by bringing in solutions from, from the broader ecosystem um, that enhance the, the social services. So with that, uh, Tracy, I'll turn that uh, over to you. Sounds good. Mike, thanks for, for that great recap of, of the paper and some key discussion points. Um, everyone on the call, now's a great time if you have some questions. Um, um, we're also joined um, by another CSCC member who contributed to the paper. His name is Mr. Heath McCarthy. Welcome, Heath. Um, so go ahead and, and submit those. We have a couple. And on this slide, um, if you're interested in, in joining, uh, we have a, a link right here to become a member. As I mentioned earlier, there's, there's no membership free at, fee. 
excuse me. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an open group, and what we'll do is we'll alert you over email as we have new content published. We have a really aggressive uh, content calendar for this year that we think is uh, exciting. And we'll also send you invitations to, to future events. And if you want to get more deeply involved uh, by contributing to one of the papers, you can join one of our topical working groups. Link is here as well. On the working groups page is also re where you can preview um, the calendar we're looking at for, for 2017. Uh, and, and lastly, the resource hub URL. This is where we post all of the papers, um, and, and those are all you know free and open access right from, from that page. And uh, just on this last slide, you'll see this if you download the PDF. I just pulled out a few papers that I thought might be of particular interest to you. Um, and these are also you know, up on the resource hub so you can scan through. But here are some, some easy links. Now for Q&A. Looks like we have plenty of time. Um, Mike and Heath, if you'd like, the paper suggests a SAS approach for collaboration. Could this also be applied to a private cloud or an on-premises scenario? Yes, yeah, Mike, I'll take that. So yes, we tried to make sure that this could be applied um, to a SaaS environment as well as a, a private cloud as an example. So if you were taking the social services, um, what we had as a provider network, that could be your on-premises environment, that could be a, a private cloud environment where you're uh, running and managing these. And you could also have a hybrid environment where you have a mixture of services. So we showed an example uh, in the reference architecture or discussed about hybrid mail uh, where you could have um, some things running in a cloud and on-premises, or those could be in, in two separate clouds. So, um, you know, those those things are certainly possible. And really, the, the there's a few, I think it's kind of considerations or design points that you need to think about with that, because that may change um, some of the types of integration that's available or how you address security and compliance. So. Um, Given your situation there, you will have to evaluate how those things, you know, are impacted when you evaluate your overall requirement. So, you know, there could be a, a trade-off where the enterprise social cloud capabilities are more tightly integrated um, in the cloud, um, but then when you have things on premises behind a firewall, you know, it could be more difficult to integrate between those things. So, again, just something you'll have to um, evaluate and, and be aware of those um, types of integration points um, when you're looking at, um, you know, cloud and, and on-prem. Great. Thank you. Um, and then a question came in just asking about other reference architectures that we have uh, on the horizon. Perhaps I could jump back a few slides without making people too, uh, <laughs> too dizzy looking at the screen, but I'll, I'll pull this up and, and feel free, um, Mike and Heath, if you'd like to um, comment. I'm just going to jump back so we can take a closer look. Yeah so, I, yeah, so in the paper we did reference a few that were specifically uh, related to social. Um, so if you look at uh, this paper, there will be some links also on the Cloud uh, Council website. There is a resource hub. If you go to the resource hub on the website, there's a list of some of the papers and reference architectures that's uh, posted there as well as, uh, I think it's here in the upper right-hand corner, there's a, a search bar in the Cloud Council website that will also, if you search on social or I, I mentioned a web paper that had some information about um, some of the decisions uh, that you'd need to do in evaluating, say, infrastructure as a service um, versus platform and those kind of things. Um, you know, just typing in web there, and that that will bring that paper up. So, those are a couple ways to uh, to get at some of the additional resources. Yeah, Perfect, thanks, Mike. This is uh, Tracy. This is actually John Megan. Let me let me jump in as well because there are a number of reference architectures that we currently have 
under development, right? So we're actively working on a security, um, security cloud security services reference architecture. Uh, we're at a draft two level version of that. Uh, we're working on uh, API management uh, reference architecture. Um, uh, we actually have sent that out for external draft review. Um, hybrid integration reference, reference architecture. We're at a, uh, we're meeting this week and we've got uh, we're pretty much at an external draft version of that. Um, we're also going to be uh, kicking off a blockchain uh, reference architecture in the uh, in the coming weeks as well. So there's lots of activity uh, in this space. So again, as I think Mike and Heather mentioned earlier. Um, folks who are interested in any of these topics, uh, please send Tracy an email, and uh, we would love to, to, to get you engaged. Thanks, John. In my email address, just for reference, it's Tracy, T-R-A-C-I-E, at O-M-G dot org. You'll also have that because following the webinar, uh, I send a, a note around to everyone that signed up so you have easy links to view this on demand, et cetera, and to share with other people who, uh, who might be interested. So two more questions just came in. Um, first, regarding peer integration, might this represent the services from a PaaS supplier which the social services provider subscribes to, wanting to better understand the notion of peer? Thanks. Uh, yeah, so it, it could be. That was the idea was, again, that it's something that exists outside of the core social services. So if we looked at it from a, a platform perspective, so if you went to a certain company and they had a SaaS offering and these are, you know, the core capabilities that were provided from it, that um, there may be other partner third-party solutions that, that peer or, or that that hosting provider um, uses in order to fill additional capabilities in there, but that could certainly apply to um, some of your own capabilities as well. So if you looked at, um, you know, you have a, the, the core enterprise service and you want to be able to, um, let's say, reach out to an external service for, you know, translation services or um, tone analysis of, of the comment or something like that, and then be able to, you know, take that and, and then, um, you know, provide the answer back. So, yeah, we saw peer services as a way to really externalize a, a core capability rather than a, something that the end user would directly uh, integrate with. Um, so hopefully that Yeah, and I think uh, that clarifies. we wanted to really represent represent a way that would reflect integrating into uh, a, a SaaS environment uh, from from sort of anything and vice versa, that, that the SaaS environment itself would provide a set of services that could be integrated into an application running in your, in your PaaS supplier. Great. Thanks, Mike and Heath. Next question is, what if during transition from one cloud services provider, say Microsoft, to another, Say Google, and, and you sit down. You sit with two cloud concurrent sources or providers. How do you manage or, or model that kind of environment? Difficultly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we didn't really, you know, we didn't really explore that topic. Um, I, you know, we already are trying to address a lot of the management of a single system within that and to sit to uh, explore having two environments having a common model I, I we didn't really look at that i don't think okay any other yeah. comments there's, there's one more question um that i will move on to the the last question is how do you make sure that enterprise data, which is in the right box of the architecture, you know what, I'll advance to the slide. So how do you make sure that enterprise data in the right box doesn't migrate and get cached out um, in, the, in the center box or the user box, which is, which is the left box? So I'll advance and, and see if I can pull up, uh, here we go. 
Yeah, so the, the I think part of it would become, you know, evaluating part of the use case and, and what exact data is needed and in what method you're going to interact with it. Um, I think from the enterprise data, one of the scenarios that we, we we talked about more frequently as we as we were you know working on the paper was was hybrid mail as an example where you're having an email system um, you know on premises and in the cloud so you really were clearly identifying what data would flow between the two uh, what inf you know what what that data is um, how it would flow whether it was encrypted or not, um, any specifics on how long that data needs to live, whether it can be cached or not, how frequently um, it would be changed or updated. So I think part of it would really be part of, uh, I guess, you know, I, I don't know if I have a, a, a clear, here's the, the exact step to take, but it would really I think, depend on evaluating what that data is and Knowing more about how you know how that what that data is going to be, um, whether it's again you know confidential information, yep. you know private uh, information, things that might be subject to you know regulation or even just you know corporate privacy, and and then you know based on that, making sure that you have the right um, access method between the provider and your enterprise and that the security in both places um, matches as well. So that part of that is evaluating if you're using a cloud provider. Um, and, and these are some of the things that we did reference in the paper, but just understanding their um, security policies and retention and data ownership and you know understanding how that's going to work because you do lose some control as you know data leaves your environment so it's just clear to understand uh, across that whole spectrum um, you know what needs to happen to that data and what will happen to it um, on a use case by use case basis because that could be different for for different uh, scenarios and then similarly with the user network is understanding the capabilities there is that data going to be cached locally um, is there encryption? What type of encryption is available on that uh, machine? And then that gets into a bit of, you know, do you also look at um, some kind of a device management solution so that you can have control over uh, securing that device, wiping data from that device, that kind of thing? Yeah, beyond that, we didn't, uh, you yeah, know, those were kind of the areas that we we had discussed as we focused on the paper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, echo all of that and specifically say that you know, the idea of data residency um, being localized in a way that may not be the same uh, as where the actual, let's say, the, the, the services themselves may be running. So we could represent that with this picture, but we didn't dive into it in the paper. Um, but it is certainly something I think worth exploring as um, people who implement this reference architecture would probably be able to talk about the implementation details specifically. And the other notion here is that, you know, again, the question earlier about a private cloud, this could represent a private cloud that then therefore does meet data residency requirements. Great. Thanks. And, and just to circle back to the, the question about transitioning, you know, between uh, uh, providers uh, to dig a little deeper. Um, and, he, and he said, sorry, it was an evil question. <laughs> but do you think if the transition takes long that a, a model is needed to navigate the problem, um, the IT service management domain? Um. Yes, yeah, so I guess if transitions meaning like I want to, um, rather than um, I guess the service is coexisting, if you're looking at migrating from one service to the other, um, again the the migration isn't you know we didn't delve deep into into that at all in the paper that that was kind of beyond our um, scope to start with, but I, I I would guess that you know similarly in looking at what are the you know the the integration points and then the expectations as, as you're looking at it. So the, from, from an availability perspective, if I'm looking at 
um, coexisting with with two services. You know, what are the SLAs or service level um, between those two services? Do they, you know, conflict? Um, are, you know, do they each have outage windows that will um, happen at different times? So we're now going to, you know, be extending uh, the outages if you look at the service as a whole. So I think some of those considerations um, should be looked at. We didn't go into those in, in detail here, but if that's if that's your use case, I, I could certainly see where you'd have to e explore those just to uh, you know figure out if there's going to be impact to uh, to the scenario. So there's you know the the, the overall support of uh, the products, how frequently they're going to change, um, if there's going to be any changes to the integration points, if you're uh, integrating between those. So if you have a, a lengthier migration, it almost becomes more of a you know coexistence, and and you want to look at it that way in, in the longer term. How are these coexisting? Because um, because it's not a short term migration. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Looks like we answered all the questions. It's, uh, about four minutes shy of the hour, which is pretty good. Pretty good timing. Um, so I guess we'll we'll end the webinar now. Um, and then this presentation should be archived in in just a few minutes. Um, if you're interested in perhaps replaying or sharing with others, it's a pretty quick uh, archive. Um, thank you again, Mike, Keith, Heather, and and also John for for chiming in. Uh, we hope everyone has a great, great rest of the day. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.